In this video, we're going to look at strategies to solve equations that have fractions, and then we're going to look at a strategy uh, to solve equations that have decimals. We're going to start with the fractions. They're not scary. Deep breath. <sighs> okay, let's get started. If we have fractions in an equation, uh, what we can do is we can actually multiply every term by the least common denominator. The least common denominator, that is the smallest value that any one of the given denominators goes into. So let's just put an example up here. I think that'll be easiest. If we have 1 3rd x minus 3 fourths equals 1 half plus 2x. So in this case, we have three fractions. One has a denominator of 3, one has a denominator of 4, and one has a denominator of 2. We typically make mistakes with fractions. It's a very common thing. So we, if there's a way that we can get rid of them, that's what we want to do. And I know what you're thinking. I got this. I'll convert them to decimals. No, that won't work here because 1 third is a repeating decimal. And you can't use 0 0.3333333333, et cetera. So we're, that's great. Good strategy doesn't work here. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out, OK, what could I do? to get rid of the denominators, how can I rewrite this using that multiplication property of equality? If we look at the denominators, 3, 4, and 2, what's a number that 3, 4, and 2 all go into? There are infinitely many answers, but the smallest of your options is, or the smallest positive, I should say, is 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite every single term, and here there are four terms, to have a denominator of 12. What would I need to multiply 3 by to give me a denominator of 12? I would need to multiply it by Four. So we multiply actually by 4 over 4 because really what we're doing is we're multiplying by 1, which doesn't change the value of that fraction. 4 twelfths is equivalent to 1 third. Here, we need a denominator of 12. We currently have a factor of 4. We would need to multiply it by 3. Whatever we do to the denominator, we will also do to the numerator. So I multiply by 3 over 3. Again, that's equivalent to 1, so we're not really changing that number. A half. So we have that denominator of 2. To get 2 to become 12, I would need to multiply it by 6. So we're going to multiply here by 6, multiply the numerator by 6. And let's not leave off the one that doesn't have a fraction. It still needs to have a denominator of 12, even though it isn't itself a fraction yet. We can take any non-fraction and turn it into a fraction by putting it over 1. Now we have a denominator of 1. I need it to be a denominator of 12, so I need to multiply by 12 over 12. Now what do we have? We have 4 over, th sorry, 4 over 12x minus 9 over 12 equals 6 over 12 plus 24x over 12. And now you're thinking, cool, now we have different fraction denominators, or different fractions, that is. Very true. But what we can do now is we can use the multiplication property of equality to cancel out each of the 12s. If I multiply both sides of an equation by the same amount, that will not change the equality. So I'm going to multiply this side, the left-hand side of the equation, by 12. And I'm going to multiply the right-hand side of the equation by 12. What that's going to do, that's going to cancel out with each of the denominators. I'm going to distribute the 12 here. It's going to cancel that denominator of 12. I distribute the 12 here. That's going to cancel out that denominator of 12. And same thing with the right-hand side. It's going to cancel each of those out. So what we're left with are the numerators going across. We're left with 4x minus 9 equals 6 plus 24x. From here, we can use inverse operations to determine the value of x, which I'm going to go over here and do. So we have 4x minus 9 equals 6 plus 24x. I might want to get all of my x terms together on one side and all of the constant terms together on the other side. If you're one of those people where the variable has to be on the left-hand side, that's fine. That means we're going to subtract 24x from both sides. At the same time, if I'm moving the x's to the left-hand side, I want to move the constant to the right-hand side. Uh, to undo a minus 9, I would add 9 to both sides. You can do this in two steps if you want, or you can do it in one step. It doesn't matter. Um, 4x minus 24x is negative 20x. And then over here, those cancel. 6 plus 9 is 15. To get x by itself, it's being multiplied by negative 20. I can undo multiplication of negative 20 by dividing by negative 20. That way, negative 20 divided by negative 20, those cancel. They make 1. 1 times x is x. 
On the right hand side I have 15 over negative 20, that would be negative 15 over 20. I should simplify my answer, they're both divisible by 5, that would give me negative 3 over 4. But the point wasn't to get to the final answer, the point was how can we clear out the fractions? And we do that by finding a common denominator, rewriting each term to have that denominator, and then multiplying both sides by that, that value. That's solving an equation with fractions. The next thing we're going to talk about in this lesson is a strategy if you're given decimals. A lot of my students tend to actually do the work with the decimals in the problem, and that's totally fine. But again, just like with fractions, we're much more likely to make a mistake with decimals in an equation than with integers in an equation. So we're going to talk about a strategy to clear decimals out. Decimals are a different beast than fractions, so to speak. Um, decimals would always have a denominator that is a power of 10. So like 0.1, that's 1 tenth. That would be 1 over 10. 0 0.02, that's 2 one hundredths, 2 over 100. So when we have decimals, what we want to do is we want to figure out which decimal has the, the least place, the smallest place, and then multiply by that power of 10. So for example, if we have 0.4x plus 0.24, 10 minus x equals 13. So here we have a tenth, and then here we have a tenth and a hundredth. Because we have one decimal place that's the hundredths, if we're going to clear out all of the decimals, then we would need to multiply by 100. We're going to use the multiplication property of equality to multiply both sides of the equation by 100. Since there's already parentheses here, I'm going to use brackets, which are the same thing as parentheses, just a way to just separate like, hey, this is one grouping symbol, this is another. So here I'm going to multiply by 100, and we're not going to forget to multiply this side by 100 either. Multiplying a decimal by 100, the shortcut there is you move the decimal two places to the right. So this would end up being 40x. It moves it twice. Uh, it's going to move this one twice. That's going to give me 24. Uh, it does, it's not going to do anything inside the parentheses. We're multiplying each term, and this beast is one single term. You choose which factor you want to multiply by 100. Since we're trying to clear out the decimal point, I would suggest using the point 24. So this gets left alone, and then over here on the other side we have 1,300. Now we've cleared out, all, cleared out all of the decimals, we could go and solve this equation as usual. First we'll distribute, so that's 40x plus 240 minus 24x equals 1,300. Uh, we can combine like terms, so I have 40x and negative 24x on the same side of the equation. At the same time I combine those, I'm also going to move this, uh, use inverse operations on that plus 240, so I'll subtract 240 from both sides. 40x minus 24x is 16x equals 1060. And then we'll divide both sides by 16. The 16's will cancel. I'm going to come over here. And we have x is equal to 1060 over 16, which can be simplified to something. Divide both sides by 4. That would be 4. 4 goes into 10 twice with 2 left over. Then it would go in 6 times with 2 left over. There we go, 265 over 4.